morning traders. It is Monday, March 21st, and 9 o'clock. So I'm going to review some of the trade ideas that come up for the week. Uh, first up to bat is Next Stage Medical. I know these guys pretty well. They're local uh, here in Massachusetts. They have a home dialysis uh, machine that um, gets the job done. I think they just have issues with respect to having enough nurses um, trained and who are willing to take these patients home and kind of get them up and running. Theory here is that uh, you don't need to go to a dialysis clinic like Fresenius. Uh, you can have it done at the leisure of your house. So anyway, taking a quick look at it, it seems like it bottomed out back on around uh, mid-February, but then it had another final flush here uh, on the 17th. So uh, we're looking for a punch over um, the 317 high, 1480 being a pretty strong resistance there. So we'll keep this on watch. Now, don't like the way the stoke is reacting on this, just because there's not a lot of not a lot of strength going into this, so it may bounce around a little bit. But if we can see another high volume day and really strong conviction over 1480, it gets interesting. Uh, NYMT had these guys on the radar for Friday, and behavior was you know kind of slow back and forth. Um, this is purely a news play. This is a REIT out of New York, and everybody was expecting it to. Um, cut the dividend significantly, almost 50%, because they are yielding 20% at this point. Um, but they decided at 4.05 p.m. on Friday to actually keep it the same, which is good and bad, because one, it's it's a return of capital, basically, on the uh, the REIT side, which is bad, because you want to be, you know, having that capital grow, and, and you know, in REIT, that's important. But um, it's good because there's, there's a lot of people whose expectations were way, way too low on this. So you can see a lot of dividend players uh, kind of jumping in here. EGL uh, is next up to bat. These guys um, have a really interesting chart pattern. I'm purely you know, interested in this from a technical standpoint. Uh, MACD is looking great. RSI is super strong. And we see a lot of great strength down here in the stoke. So um, did a little fib retrace on this just from the high to the low. I've got um, a strong base here you know, coming through January, late January all the way out to late February. You really want to see that 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 base form. Um, gives a lot of opportunity for short-term sellers to get out and the stronger hands to kind of rise to the surface. And as you see, it, it did that. Um, do need a really strong punch uh, through 1854, which is just kind of tracing the high from the close on Friday. And I know that 1899 is a, is a key level uh, from a FIB standpoint. Here's a great company too, PN. Uh, these guys came up on the scan. Uh, again, a very technical play here. Stoke is strong. I love the RSI and there's a great gap on uh, the MACD. But if you look at this thing, just completely bottomed out back in mid-December and um, you know we have the support here from February 3rd and I'm going to kind of put it in here as well even though we had this gap from uh, 1224. But if this can get over that and get into this red zone here um, from 1214. There's going to be a lot of great activity. Volume's picking up. Stoke is strong. RSI is strong. And great gap again on the uh, on the MACD. FNFV, same deal. Fib retrace. Uh, stock's been really looking for a bottom for a while, and you know I have some notes in here myself. But um, this could be like a more of a of a three white soldier that needs to have some some consolidation to come back down to uh, 1132. That's where it gets interesting. Um, but I will be keeping a close eye on it just because the candle on Friday was, was quite large, which means there's a lot of buyer activity in there. Form is another one. Um, I consider this a, a safer play, although that's just my opinion. But um, I see some great support in here at 769, um, touching it, you know, and playing around there back on March 3rd, and then again on the 4th. And we also see it kind of came into play on Friday. So uh, it's a key technical level. You know, and if you're looking to trade, you know, having a, a buy level set at 769 with a tight stop, um, you're either right for a very long time or you're wrong for a couple seconds and you get out with, you know, $100 loss or something. CBGI, uh, I love the shape of this chart. I've seen this pattern many, many times. Bottoms out, kind of comes up. This is all the short-term people expecting a pop. This is all pinched. It's way too premature. That gets sold off. Then they do it again, and usually this only comes back to 50%. So then for them to do a full witch hat twice, um, I know is a very rare type of occurrence. So this is where you see the volume really crank in on Friday. Um, I'm not going to chase this, but I know that there's some great support at 245, so I'll be looking for that um, to hold today. KS, 
um, kind of got interested in this group last week. Uh, I noticed again that the uh, the paper sector, and this is RFP was one that we had on watch from last Monday. The paper sector, for some reason, is, is picking up, and I, I think this all comes back to uh, the price increase um, that um, Resolute Forest Products put in. This is RFP uh, back, you know, a couple months, a couple weeks ago. So there's some signs of life here. KS also plays in that space. Um, they had some great activity, you know, on Thursday. They're coming out of this this pinched pipe bottom here, and uh, you know, some strong support at 12:40. Not going to chase it. Don't like the fact that the volume was mostly negative. On Friday, um, the RSI seems to be kind of tapping out, but strong MACD, strong squeeze, and look at the consistency on the stoke here, which is just gorgeous, going all the way back to March 4th. And last up to bat is GES. Yes, bottom play. I'm potentially going to delete this from my watch list. I just like it because there's so much open space here in this gap that we know uh, historically needs to be filled 70% of the time. It's just that you have a strong resistance from 317, TTM's trending down, Stoke is horrible, RSI is horrible, and your MACD just crossed over. So everything on this screen's bad, which probably means it's my best trade. <laughs> but I'm just going to keep it on watch for now. It's already kind of cranking down here at one cent in the pre-market. So that's it. Again, this is just uh, for entertainment purposes. Please do not trade uh, based on what I'm saying here. Um, you know, Entertainment is, is important, and maybe... You can get some education from that and just learn how chart patterns work and you know what some of the things are. You can find some of your stocks on your own and make your own decisions. So that's about it. Happy trading. Let's see if I can close this out.